Hi everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Today we're going to be carrying on solving the 2019 British Physics Olympiad round one. I'm going to be solving the questions from part F onwards. So if you're looking for the previous questions, please have a look at the description and you're going to see part one of this video. Just a little disclaimer that this video is not affiliated with the British Physics Olympiad and these are just my solutions and uh, multiple possible solutions may exist. Okay, well, let's have a look at question F. So we have platinum and potassium and they have relative density. So we have 21.5 grams per cubic centimeter and 0.89 grams per cubic centimeter. How many cubic centimeters of platinum could be attached to a 10 cubic centimeter of potassium before the combination starts to sink in in mercury and we're given the density of mercury so the basic idea here is that if you just had potassium it would not be sinking so you start adding in platinum which is of course denser and at some point you are going to reach a, uh, a critical density at which this combination will start sinking this is a classic really interesting Archimedes problem or Archimedes principle problem remember Archimedes principle says that the up thrust is equal to the weight of the liquid that's been displaced now in this case the displaced weight will be equal to the mass of the mercury multiplied by g and uh, this will of course be equal let's give it some subscript so it's going to be the mass of the mercury times g and this will be equal to the mass of the um, platinum times g plus the mass of the uh, potassium let's call it k times g as well remember in general mass is equal to density times volume so we can plug this in to the equation just here what we're going to get is that the density of the mercury that's been displaced times the total volume that's been displaced times g will be equal to the mass of the potassium which is going to be rho pt times v and that will be the uh, volume of the potas of uh, the platinum times g plus mk which uh, will just be equal to rho k then vk times g so the question is essentially telling us that the total weight of the mercury that's been displaced will be equal to the total weight due to the uh, platinum and the total weight due to the potassium. Okay, well, we can actually think of a uh, relationship. So remember, the total volume is just the sum of the two volumes. So in other words, uh, V, the total volume, will be just be equal to the volume uh, PT plus the volume K. So what I can do is just write that in here. And what I'm going to get is that the density of the mercury times uh, VPT plus VK is equal to rho PT times VPT times G plus rho K VK times G. Okay, now I've missed a G here and we can start simplifying this expression. The first thing that I'm going to do is just cancel out some G's like so. So let's cancel out the G's. And uh, what we can do is uh, really start plugging in some numbers in order to simplify this expression. If we think about it, we know the density of the mercury, we know the uh, density of platinum, and we also know the uh, density of the potassium. The only unknown really is V subscript PT that we'll be able to solve here. So I'm just going to work in the units that I'm given over here and I'm going to get my um, my final answer as well in those units. So rho of the density of the mercury is 13.6. 
V, uh, v platinum, this is what we are uh, looking for. So we're going to leave that as so. And then we know that VK is 10, like so. This will be equal to rho of the density of the platinum, which is 21.5, and uh, times VPT plus rho k, which uh, is equal to 0 0.89, and vk is equal to 10. Okay, well, let's uh, do a little bit of further simplification. So what we're left with is 13.6 vpt plus 13.6 times 10 is 136, so it's gonna be equal to 21 0.5 V subscript PT plus 0.89 times 10 is going to be 8.9. Okay, now let's put all the terms onto one side of the equation. And uh, what we're going to be left with is 21.5 VPT minus 13.6 VPT. And on the left-hand side of the equation, I'm just going to have 136 minus 8.9. Okay, so just factorizing out, let's write this out fully. This will be equal to 21.5 VP, or actually 21.5 minus 13.6. And just factorizing out the volume of the platinum. And finally, we can just rearrange for this uh, volume, which is going to be 136 minus 8.9 all over 21.5 minus 13.6. And if we put that into a calculator, we are going to get an answer of about 16.1. And in this question, we're mostly working up, well, actually, we're working up to two significant figures. That's the lowest. So let's just leave the volume as 16 cubic centimeters. Okay, so part G, we have one kg of ice at zero degrees C is placed in a thermally insulated bucket of volume five liters. Then we start adding water until the bucket is completely filled. Calculate the temperature of the water when half of the ice has melted. And we have a bunch of units over here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some conversions. So I'm given that the volume is five liters. So one liter is a thousand cubic centimeters. Let's just convert that to meters, so that's going to be a thousand times, remember centi is 10 to the power of minus two meters cubed, so that's going to be a thousand times 10 to the power of minus six meters cubed, a thousand times 10 to the power of minus six is going to give us 10 to the power of minus three meters cubed. Okay, now we know that we have added one kilogram in the bucket. How much, so let's say that this over here is our bucket, so we've added some ice over here. Let's say that here is one kg. Now, how much as a percentage is that of the bucket? We know that the bucket is five liters, so that means that the total volume of the bucket is, I should just write this down, that the volume of the bucket is going to be equal to 5.0 times 10 to the power of minus three meters cubed. Well, because the density of the ice is 920 kilograms per meter cubed, then we know that the volume that uh, one kilogram of ice is going to have can be found using the simple equation that density is equal to mass over volume. So this is, of course, all applied for the ice. I'm just going to give it some subscripts. That means that the volume of the ice, of course, will be equal to the mass of the ice divided by the density of the ice. The mass of the ice is just one kilogram and the density is 920. 20. So 1 over 920 is going to give us 1.087 uh, times 10 to the power of minus 3 
cubic meters. So this essentially, I mean, let's also write that down as 1.087 liters of ice. Well, this of course means that the volume of the water that's uh, that's been filled, let's say this here is the water, will of course be, let's just write this down, that the volume of the water is just going to be 5 litres minus 1.087, plugging that into a calculator, that's 3.913 litres of, uh, of water. So this over here is the water and this over here is the ice. Problems are normally solved by simple energy conservation. But what is actually happening in this problem? First off, we're melting some ice. So we're going to have some melting ice into our equation. We melt some ice, but then additionally, we're raising the temperature of the ice water. Now, together though, though that process is also cooling down the water that was already there. Yeah, so this water here is going to start at 15 degrees and it's going to end up on the final temperature. Whereas the, when you're raising the temperature of the ice water, you're going to start off at zero, the temperature of ice, and you're going to finish off at the final temperature. Well, look at that. Now we suddenly have an expression. The energy of the water is just mc delta theta, mc change in temperature, so that's mc 15 minus t because we're cooling that bit down. Uh, this over here is just the specific latent heat of ice times the mass of the ice plus m2, which is just the mass of the, um, the uh, melted ice, so that's half a kg, times c, the specific heat of ice. Okay, well, let's start plugging in some numbers. So the volume of the water is 3.913 because of the conversion rate, that's uh, exactly the same in kilograms. So one liter of water is normally one kg. So that's gonna be 3.913 times the specific heat capacity of water, which is 4180. So let's write this down, times 4180 times 15 minus t like that while this is going to equal to the specific latent heat of um, of ice which is 3.34 times 10 to the 5 multiplied by the mass which is half a kg so half of that plus m2 which is also half this guy is half because if half of the ice is melted, well, half of it is going to be left as ice and half of it is going to be left as ice water, which we are heating up, times uh, C, the specific heat capacity, which is 4180, and uh, T minus zero. Notice that now we suddenly have an equation just for one unknown, and what we can do is start simplifying out the brackets. Now let's do a little bit of uh, algebra. So what we're gonna get uh, on the left-hand side is 3.913 times 4180 times 15. Take away 3.913 times 4180 times T. This will be equal to Three, so a half of 3.34 times 10 to the power of 5, let's just put that into a calculator, so 3.34 times 0 0.5, that's going to give me 1.67 times 10 to the 5, plus a half of 4180, so 4180 divided by 2, that's, that is of course uh, 2090 times T and that will be the last factor because we're not going to have um, for a final factor because this guy here is zero. Okay, now we have a factor with T on this side and a factor with T on this side. Let's do a little bit of rearranging and what we're going to get is 3.913 times 4180 times 15, let's take away 
1.67 times 10 to the power of 5 and what we're going to get on this side is 290t plus 3.913 times 4180t Okay, we're almost there guys and let's just copy down the left hand side so 3.913 times 4180 times 15 take away minus 1.67 times 10 to the power of 5 this will of course be equal to t factorized out 2090 plus 3.913 times 4180 okay now our final step for t would be to say that t will be equal to 3.913 times 4180 times 15 minus 1.67 times 10 to the power of 5 and this will be divided by 2090 plus 3.913 times 4180 and if we put that into a calculator we are going to get 4.247 degrees let's call that 4.3 degrees okay guys so hopefully this video was useful i'm going to be solving the uh further questions in separate videos but for now uh just before that have a go with those questions yourselves and any questions do let me know thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video